What you're seeing here is not magic, it's chemistry. The most unbelievable chemical reactions scientists have ever created. Here are 15 of the most crazy chemical reactions. Number 15, Palo Santo Wood. Palo Santo, which translates from Spanish to mean holy wood, is a type of tree that grows throughout South America. It's long been associated with its healing properties, has been used by shamans for hundreds and possibly thousands of years in sacred rituals, and is now used by people around the world who want to benefit from its uplifting effects. The wood itself contains several chemicals that help to stimulate the brain's uptake of oxygen, but these also mean that it can burn in a surprising way under certain conditions. Sticks of the wood are lit at the top to controllably release smoke. Sometimes, as long as there's a high enough water content present, it'll appear as if the flame is burning above the wood, almost like a floating sunset halo. The scientific reason for this is that no types of wood actually burn, but the vapors they release do. When exposed to heat, the gases are released, but occur in too high a concentration directly above the wood to ignite. So it's only where they've mixed with enough oxygen that a flame can form. The flame will, of course, eventually char the wood and allow oxygen to interact with the carbon, which is why it will, in the end, burn to ash. Number 14. Thermite and Ice Thermite is a substance made up of metal powder which, when exposed to heat, undergoes an exothermic reaction. Various different types can be made depending on which metal you have available, and there are a variety of uses such as in the manufacture of grenades and fireworks. There is one unexpected reaction involving thermite, however, and that's when it's exposed to ice. In itself, it's not seen as an explosive compound, but if it's lit when it's on top of a block of frozen water, it takes on a much more destructive quality. The reason for this is due to the amount of heat it releases when it has been ignited. This causes the ice to superheat and turn into vapor, which in turn condenses around the thermite particles. The thermite reacts even faster with the water, releases even more heat, and creates a steam explosion. Number 13. The BZ Reaction The belosov zabotinsky reaction is an experiment that's used to demonstrate non-equilibrium thermodynamics. Whereas usually you would expect a chemical reaction to combine the ingredients to produce something new, this reaction creates a chemical oscillator where the constituent parts continue to change form. There are around 18 different steps that are needed to make this work properly, but in essence it involves mixing bromine with an acid. Bromide ions are converted into molecular bromine, which is red, and this is then broken down into its ions again. The resultant pattern can be almost hypnotic and look as if they've been created on a computer, but what you're looking at is the real-time speed of this reaction. There are a number of different variations that create alternative colors, but the explanation of this process is so complicated that it took more than a decade after it was first discovered in 1951 before any publications felt confident enough to report on it. Number 12. Diethyl Zinc Diethyl zinc is a highly reactive compound that's made from a core of zinc that's bound to a form of ethane and has a number of uses within chemistry to help with the formation of other compounds. Available as a liquid, it's also used in some rocket fuels, and when you see how volatile it is, it becomes clear why. Almost immediately upon being exposed to air, it sets alight, and if squirted from a nozzle, can function as a flamethrower without the need for a source of ignition. The behavior of diethyl zinc in air sees it burn and therefore react with the oxygen that's present, and it forms zinc oxide, carbon dioxide, and water. Number 11. The Dancing Squid In Japan, there's a popular dish called Katsuika Odoridan, which is a rice or noodle soup with fresh squid placed on top of it. The squid's heart has only recently been removed by the time it's served, and this leads to a rather bizarre effect. When soy sauce is poured over it, the sodium in the liquid activates the neurons next to the muscles in the tentacles and causes them to begin moving. While it normally just causes the squid to appear as if it's dancing, the effect can be so pronounced that on occasion it can walk out of the bowl and onto the table. This doesn't mean the animal has been brought back to life, but it's a process that's using up the remaining energy within the cells. It only works for a few seconds, and after the display, the squid is returned to the kitchen where it's sliced up and prepared to be eaten. This isn't the only species that this works with, either. Frogs' legs, which are a specialty in France, can also be seen twitching when salt is sprinkled onto them, again a result of the sodium in the salt replicating the normal bodily functions that enable muscles to move in a living creature. Number 10. Overcharging a Battery 
Lithium batteries are a vital part of modern life. They're in our phones, our computers, electric cars, and virtually anything else that's powered by stored electricity. But a serious amount of research has gone into producing charging technology that ensures there aren't attempts to fill them beyond their capacity. Excessive charging can cause what's called thermal runaway. And once this begins, there's no going back. When you're charging your phone, you've probably noticed it heats up, and it's quite normal for the battery's temperature to increase by around 9 degrees Fahrenheit. But once thermal runaway takes place, this rise can be many more times that. This causes the pressure to build within the battery, and it will reach a point where it can't contain itself any longer and needs to vent. A crack will open up, releasing a huge amount of smoke, and in the most serious cases, flames will be formed too. When you see this in action, it becomes clear why battery manufacturers are so careful to insist upon normal operating temperatures and to only use their approved charging cables. Because if this were to happen inside your phone when you're not around, the consequences could be fatal. Number 9. Cesium and Water Cesium is an alkali metal that's silvery golden in color and has an unusually low melting point of 83.3 degrees Fahrenheit. You're probably aware of the type of reaction it causes from chemistry class when you would have seen what happens when a piece of sodium is dropped into water. And while the process of cesium's reaction with water is in effect the same, it's regarded as the most reactive of all metals, and the effects are far more substantial than seen in a school lab. It's so reactive, in fact, that it must be stored in oil because the water in the air is enough to begin a reaction. Upon contact with water, cesium instantly explodes and, if present in high enough quantities, will form hydrogen gas, which further increases the size of the blast. Despite this danger, it's a highly useful element, being used in medical and industrial processes. And as well as being a byproduct of nuclear fusion, it just obviously has to be handled very carefully to prevent something catastrophic from happening. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe to Top 5s with notifications on. Number 8. Dancing Gummy Bears According to the Disney cartoon, gummy bears can dance here, there, and everywhere. But never has this been more true than in the actual dancing gummy bear experiment. It starts with a container that has heated potassium chlorate in it. The gummy bear is dropped in and immediately starts bouncing about a mist of display of light and smoke. It seems almost unbelievable that an innocent piece of candy can cause something like this to happen. But the secret lies in the high sugar content that it contains. Adding the gummy bear, which is a much lower temperature than the liquid, instantly triggers the thermal decomposition of the potassium chlorate, which begins to produce potassium chloride and large quantities of oxygen. This is more than enough to ignite the gummy bear, in particular its sugar, which starts to break down into carbon dioxide and water. The result is the release of gas vapors and purple flashes from the potassium in what is surely one of the most violent ends a piece of candy has ever met. Number 7. Nitrogen Triiodide Nitrogen triiodide is an inorganic compound that's made up of one part nitrogen to three parts iodine. It's created by reacting iodine with ammonia, but it has to be kept in cold, dark conditions with ammonia once it's formed, because it's an extremely sensitive contact explosion. Just the smallest knock or touch causes it to explode loudly in a cloud of purple vapor because it instantly releases nitrogen gas and iodine. This delicate state has, however, made it rather interesting to scientists, although there are, of course, no practical uses for such a highly reactive substance, which can't even be safely transported from where it's been created. Usually, it's triggered by a gentle touch with a feather, but even with a small gust of wind or slight movement can cause it to explode, as can a laser sight. It's the only known substance that detonates when it comes into contact with nuclear decay, such as alpha particles and the byproducts of nuclear fission, which means it could potentially be used as an early warning sign so long as it's contained somewhere where it can't cause any damage itself. Number 6. Nitric Acid and Gloves When you're working in a chemistry lab, your natural instincts will probably be to wear safety gear, especially when dealing with certain toxic chemicals. But in some cases, the equipment that's designed to protect you can instead be the cause of the problem. Nitric acid is an extremely corrosive substance that will dissolve most things and is particularly dangerous if it comes into contact with human skin. It reacts with the proteins and fats that are present and can destroy living tissue. And when it's concentrated enough, it'll stain the skin yellow because of the way it reacts with keratin. While this may sound bad enough, it's certainly preferable to if you were wearing a standard laboratory glove instead. 
When they come into contact with fuming nitric acid, instead of just melting away, they ignite because of the reaction with the nitrile and latex in the gloves, meaning you'll suffer from chemical burns and burns from the flames too. That's why in this one instance of working with this substance, it's recommended you simply don't wear gloves at all, no matter how counterintuitive it may be. Number five, the Pharaoh's Serpent. We've all seen the rather anticlimactic snake fireworks that once a tablet is ignited, a continual stream of black ash is released. And while it's always somewhat of a letdown that almost makes you wonder why it was even called a snake in the first place, this is the safe version of the original experiment which is far more interesting. Known as the Pharaoh's Serpent, the original material is instead made from mercury thiocyanate, which is a white powder that can be hazardous if it makes contact with human skin. The effect is created in the same way as the one that's more commonly seen around the world, with a source of heat applied to it, but the trail of ash it produces is a lot different. The flame triggers a rapid exothermic reaction, which truly looks like a snake that's emerging from the ground. Usually two horns will emerge first before the rest of the body lifts up, and it can range from between dark gray and a light tan in color, with the inner part forming a much darker hue than the rest. It's no wonder that it's said to look like an Egyptian snake that would be at home in the desert, and is undoubtedly more impressive than a tube of black ash. Number 4. Triboluminescence Triboluminescence is a little understood phenomenon where light is emitted when a material is being scratched, ground, or crushed. It's most commonly seen when working with crystals, and often happens in diamond workshops where the stones are being ground to the desired shape. One very clear way to see it is when drilling into large quartz or stone crystals, and when the external lights are dimmed, you'll see continuous flashes being generated. Quite why this happens, though, is somewhat of a mystery. It's thought that it happens because particles that contain static chargers are being separated and reunified, but this is an unproven theory. The phenomenon can be seen in some surprising places, and can be created at home by crushing sugar crystals, or if you have them, wintergreen lifesavers that because of the wintergreen oil they contain are fluorescent and emit blue light. Most unexpected of all, though, is on the edge of a roll of scotch tape. As you unpeel it, there's a glowing line where it's being pulled away from the roll, something that has been found to be the result of the generation of X-rays. Number three, nitric acid and copper. Formed from nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, nitric acid is one of the most corrosive acids that are worked with in laboratories. To count as an acid, it needs to have a concentration of at least 68% in water, but far higher concentrations are possible, with red fuming nitric acid being more than 86% and white fuming acid being at more than 95%. When being mixed with copper, though, all that's needed is the weakest concentration, and this in itself helps to show how potentially dangerous this substance can be. At first, a measure of acid is poured into the flask, and then a few grams of copper filings are added. They immediately break down and turn the liquid green, but in just a matter of seconds, a thick brown gas begins to be released. Eventually, the liquid will turn blue and the gas will dissipate. But the most surprising thing about this is that copper is known for being an inert metal. In fact, nitric acid is the only type of acid that'll react with it, producing nitrogen dioxide, copper nitrate, and water. Anything else, even hydrochloric acid, will just surround it without any effect whatsoever. Number two, the briggs rauscher Oscillating Reaction. If you mix liquids together in a beaker, then they'll eventually react and create a new compound that remains the same color, won't it? While this may be true in most cases, the briggs rauscher Oscillating Reaction is an example of an experiment that never seems to be fully complete. There are very few of these types of oscillating experiments, but this is one of the best for displays because of its effects can be seen so easily. There are several steps that are needed to produce the liquids for this reaction. Some of the basic ingredients include hydrogen peroxide, manganese, iodine, starch, and an acid such as sulfuric or perchloric. The liquids have to be mixed in a specific order and need to be continuously mixed for the reaction to work. At first, it starts to turn to an orange color before turning into a deep shade of blue in the blink of an eye. Then it begins to fade to become colorless, and the whole process repeats itself. This will happen up to 10 times in succession before eventually retaining its dark blue color and releasing a strong smell of iodine. The reasons behind this behavior are quite complex, but the basic mechanism is that to start with, there's a low level of iodine. So the hydrogen peroxide and iodate begin by being converted into iodide, which the acid breaks down into iodine and other products. 
Once the iodide level is high enough, the process that breaks down the hydrogen peroxide can no longer function, so the liquid changes color, and it's only when the acid breaks down enough that it can start again, and this is when the second color change occurs. Because both processes feed each other, it can continue to cycle around until they finally reach an equilibrium. Various changes are possible to make the color slightly different, and it's a great example of slow and fast reactions happening in tandem with each other. Number 1. Explosive Polymerization Polymers are some of the most useful materials in the modern world, such as plastics, nylon, and synthetic rubber. They're made up of extremely long molecule chains that are made up of smaller constituent parts, and the process of combining them together is called polymerization. A lot of heat can be released when this is done, and in some cases, it happens in a split second with almost unbelievable results. This is no clearer than an experiment where paranitroaniline is mixed with sulfuric acid. When the two substances are placed in a container above a heat source, at first it looks like very little will happen. There's definitely movement where the liquid appears to be expanding, but suddenly it releases a cloud of smoke. Once this clears, a huge pillar of carbon polymer has been formed, seemingly out of nowhere. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.